What's up everybody? CL Liquid here, back with another video. As I promised the other day, um, I did my um, eHume A10 unboxing video and I said that I would be connecting the uh, dash cam to my car and testing it out. So I hooked it up yesterday. I mean, it's kind of a janky hookup right now because I didn't run the cables or anything because I'm just testing it. Um, so it still has all the wires uh, tucked in from my um, Autovox X1, which I have been running full time. I took on my vacation for like a 13 hour drive one way and a 13 hour drive back. So it got a pretty good testing. The X1 did. So, anyway, um, so I just hooked this uh, eHume A10 up just to get it running and test it out. So I tested it all day yesterday, which was Saturday, and pretty much all day today, as you can see from the clock on the uh, dash cam there it is 6 23 p.m. it is rainy yes it's a gloomy day here so it's a good day to test the uh, low light as well as test the uh, waterproof of the rear view camera so anyway let's jump into this enough talking about that um, so here I have the X1 that I have been using and you can kind of see the front cameras here as far as comparisons um, so it's a little brighter on the uh, eHume. I don't know if you can tell there. There's no way. Let me see. Actually, I may need to bump the brightness up on that one. I mean, that helps a little bit to have the brightness up. Let me see what the brightness is on this one. Bump that one all the way up. Oh, it's even brighter. So the front camera and the brightness on the eHume is definitely seems a little better let me see if I can get another angle up more even to it no I'd say it's it's not the angle or anything to do with the light coming through no matter where I aim this it seems to be a little brighter on the eHume so as far as that goes I'll give the point to the eHume A10 over the uh, Autovox X1 um, so you can see the clocks here definitely can see the clock a lot better on the uh, X1 I don't know if that really matters to you if you need to see the clock or not I mean I have a clock in my car most cars to do nowadays so it's not really that big a deal but just letting you know that seems to be a little better on the X1 so point to that for the clock if you care about that so let's jump on to the uh, settings here um, they're both pretty much laid out about the same I mean you have your record buttons here uh, your you have your switch to your rear camera which I don't have hooked up for the X1 right now because I'm using the uh, eHume here but you normally would hit that and it'll switch to your rear camera on here you actually swipe and it switches to the rear camera so it's kind of hard. I'm going to put up some videos. Other than that, you got your normal uh, video there, playback. Playback on here. I stop the recording play back on here locked to lock your recording so it doesn't record over something important that you want to keep um, like I said the record button and then your settings your audio to turn your audio if you want to hear hear or don't hear the audio from inside the car you can turn that off here on the eHume on here you actually have to go into the settings to turn it off so let's go ahead and jump into the settings. Enough fooling around with this stuff. So settings. So right away you can see a little bit difference. One's got the dark background, one's got the light background. On the X1, you actually scroll with your finger to go up and down the menu. Whereas on here you have buttons on the side that you have to press to go up and down. I mean, not really that big a deal. Doesn't really matter that much to me I mean it is a, I guess a little bit nicer to be able to swipe if you're used to doing it on your you know phones or tablets or whatever so I guess 
that's a little bit of a plus. Um, so we got loop recordings on here. Well, first of all, the video resolution front camera on the eHume is 1020p and 720p. On the X1, it is, let's get down to it. Where is that? Where's my, what am I missing here? There we go. Sorry. Stop the recording, jump back in. All right, here we go. So scroll down, resolution on here, front camera you have 1296p and 1080p. So you have a little bit higher of an option resolution on here for front camera versus the one on the eHume A10. Um, I usually keep mine on 1080p just because that's good enough for me and it saves you no know, file space. I don't really care too much about you know getting a little extra oomph on the video resolution as long as I can see the license plate and make out the car if something happens I'm I'm good um, loop recordings uh, one minute three minute five minute pretty much same on here one minute two minute three minute uh, so you do get a five minute on that one I don't know why you do a five minute loop recording I mean usually keep it one because if you have to go back and watch these videos and show them to a police officer or something you can't really scrub forward on the video like it doesn't buffer like that you have to actually sit there and watch the full five minutes to see the playback so I normally keep mine on one minute and just it just does little separate one minute increment videos clips but obviously you can do what you want uh, exposure I played around with that I haven't noticed any real difference bumping it up or down um, not really sure what that helps with but the eHume A10 does have that option to change that uh, you may notice a difference I didn't um, auto screen off that's basically when you're driving like when you back up if you have it connected to your rear view uh, or your backup lights when you put it in reverse it automatically kicks on the uh, rear view and gives you the little guidelines and grids to back up um, and then when you put it back in drive, this auto screen off is when it decides to automatically turn off. Like it'll stay on the view for one minute or two minutes, three minutes, and then it'll just switch off and you'll just have a regular mirror like that. So on here, it has the same thing except they call it driving mode. So on that, when you turn it on, I can't remember what it is on this one, if it's two minutes or something around there I can't really remember but if you turn driving mode on it does the same thing it's just they call it auto screen off on the eHume and it's driving mode on here and you don't have uh, like an option for one minute two minute or three minute it's just kind of uh, set to I wish I could remember I don't I don't ever turn it on because I like to have the rear view mirror rear view on all the time so I can see behind me as I'm driving so I don't keep the drive mode on but same thing anyway um, going on down we have the G sensor which is like if something jars your car uh, you can set that to low medium or high sensitivity so if something jars your car uh, it'll lock that video recording of whatever happens around that time so if it's a crash it'll lock that video that recording so that you it doesn't accidentally record over top of it as it's looping that'll always be there and the same on here uh, down through here G sensor it has low and high it doesn't have a medium but same thing and then parking mode sensitivity parking monitor same thing on here is parking sensitivity and parking monitor uh, you have high medium and low and again on here you only have low and high I don't know if that really matters much um, I don't really use parking mode because it requires you to keep it on uh, constant power 12 volt power and I don't really want to tax my battery even though I'm not really draining too much I say it drains about as much as like if you left your dome light on but still um, you know in time that will drain your battery and it's probably not good for you but if you want that option then obviously you can connect that up and use it uh, but anyway set that low medium high if your car is parked and turned off and you're at work or something and your car is parked in a, like a parking lot or parking garage at work and somebody rounds the corner and dings your car or somebody 
bumps against it with their, you know, walking in between your car with their purse hits your car. If you have it set to high, it'll probably set it off and then it'll start recording and it'll record whatever it was. I mean, I don't know if it kicks on fast enough to catch what it was that did it. So I don't know if it's worth it. But anyway, it, it's there if you want to turn that on. Format SD card, um, you know what that does. Date and time, uh, volume. Volume is for like the button presses you're hearing right now when I'm touching this. You can set that to high, medium, low, or off. I uh, normally keep it on low. Then uh, firmware version there on the eHum A10. It is A5800 underscore DA380 underscore 180411. If that means anything to anyone, then I'm impressed. Uh, operation guide it has a QR code where you can actually scan that QR code and it'll take you to a digital copy of your operation guide. And of course it also comes with a physical copy in the box. Um, sorry, that was my watch dinging. That was not the mirror. So that's pretty much it. I mean, it's nothing special in here. It's pretty bare bones in the settings. Um, and then your settings there. Uh, you can take a snapshot, like if something goes by or somebody's license plate in front of you being a, a butthole or something, you want to get his license plate for some reason, you click that and it'll take a snapshot. Um, again, you have your brightness up here. If you tap, you can turn that up and down the buttons uh, whereas on the X1 you actually slide to adjust the brightness um, what else is different on here uh, jumping back into the settings I should show that on the X1 it has this LDWS you see there that is the lane departure warning system basically it's let me see if I can show it here this right here uh, I don't have the GPS thing plugged in right now, so you're not seeing the miles per hour. But um, this is the lane departure warning system. Like if you're driving for like 12 hours for whatever reason and you're starting to get tired and drowsy and you may start to drift on the road, if you go over too far to one side or the other, these lines will turn red. Like if you go far to the left, this will start blinking red and it'll uh, give you a warning, a little siren beep continuous beep that you're going over into another lane and so it's supposed to kind of like wake you up or let you know hey pay attention um, I used it I had it turned on when I went to my vacation when I drove that 13 hours um, I mean when you get up to highway speeds like 80 miles per hour and stuff around there and you're hearing highway noise and you have your music playing or talk radio whatever you're listening to or you have somebody in the car with you that you're talking to I mean you really don't hear it it kind of becomes background noise like white noise at a certain point I mean you, every now and then you'll hear it like oh yeah there that is like that that's exactly what it's doing I'm not sure why that went off there or but that's what it does if you saw that uh, I don't know if it really helped me much, but it's nice that it's there. I mean, I guess it's better to have and not have it. It's a nice little feature. And like I said, you can see your miles per hour. It's it's about one or two, I'd say one or two miles per hour, give or take off on the actual speedometer on my car. So, I mean, it's good enough. Uh, anyway, uh, what else is there? Uh, let me jump back in here. Da, 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 stop that. Uh, you have your miles per hour kilometer settings this has a GPS um, port on it I'm not sure what that does maybe it's part of the recordings um, I mean I guess I'll see here when I uh, upload these re recordings from these to see what it shows but uh, it doesn't come with a GPS receiver the one that's plugged into it right now is actually the one from the X1 that I plugged in just to see if it worked. I mean, it's the same connection and same port size and everything. So I plugged it in, we'll see. Uh, I mean, I haven't noticed anything on the actual mirror that shows like a location or miles per hour or speed or anything like that. So I'm not exactly sure what that's for on the uh, eHume A10. On here it actually you know have your speed and plus when you view the videos uh, there's a software that installs on your PC 
that shows you like a Google Maps view of everywhere you've been so you actually see your uh, travel which is kind of cool um, so yeah I guess we'll see maybe it has the same thing when I connect this to the PC um, and it installs something but uh, what else is there I think that was pretty much the only difference between the two um, yeah, like I said, the sound record on this one is actually in the settings where you turn it off. Or is on that one, it's on the front screen here. You can mute or unmute it. Um, parking, oh, you do have the parking lines on the X1. You can turn those off and on. Let me show that real quick. I should probably show that. If I put it in reverse, you see it switches and shows the parking lines. I don't have it calibrated, but normally it will show your lowest point when you're backing up but right now this one's kind of high because like I said I just connected it just to get everything working but I mean it's it uh, works I mean it's just like this one this one has like little thinner lines this one does have like thicker lines so easier to view I would say but I mean they're both pretty much the same and then you put it back in park it disappears And it does take a second for the lines to pop up, I've noticed. On the X1, it the lines come up pretty much immediately. I mean, I don't... Ah, stupid, I should have muted my watch. I mean, I don't use the guidelines to, like, back up, so I don't really care. I mean, if they were there or weren't there, I, I wouldn't really care. But if you're someone who cares about that stuff, um, I mean, I'll say they pop up a little... Probably a second or two faster on the X1. Uh, what else is there? Like I said, you can swipe to the rear view. Uh, the rear view camera, as you can see, mm, not the best. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to have to say the X1 has probably got a better rear view camera. I mean, it's, it's very dark and kind of muddy. Even though they're both 720p, I mean the 720p on resolution or picture on the uh, X1 seems to be a little better. It's like a little more vibrant and clear. This one's kind of muddy looking. I mean, I don't know if you can really tell if I can zoom in there. I mean, it's kind of a muddy. I mean, you can see good enough to get the job done. I mean, you are paying a hundred dollars less than what you're paying for the X1. So I mean, you're gonna not really expect to get the same. I mean, there's got to be some reason the X1 is more. Or they're trying to charge you more. So as far as the waterproof and everything like that, they're both waterproof. I mean, it's raining right now. I've been driving around. They're both have been in a torrential downpour today, and I've had no issues. They're both still showing their picture. Obviously, I can't show you the uh, X1's picture right now because I can't. I don't have both of them hooked up at the same time. But yeah, I mean, uh, I'm gonna have to say uh, if I was given a grade of one to ten, ten being best, one being worst, uh, I would probably give the Ehum A10. I mean, I'd probably give it like a six. I mean, it's a little above average. I'm bringing it down just for the fact of this rear view camera. If they improve that, then I would probably say it's definitely up there with the X1 because of the front camera. It's definitely, you're getting a clear view of the front there. But I mean, it's even though this one is brighter, the X1 has got a smoother HD picture. I mean, if you can understand what I'm saying, I don't know if you can tell there in the video, it's just a overall smoother, cleaner looking video. Whereas this one's brighter, and I don't know. I mean, I can't, I can't really describe it. You got a brighter picture versus just a little bit darker but smoother video. 
take that how you want. I don't, I don't know how, any other way to describe it. Um, the cameras themselves, uh, like I said in my unboxing video, if you want to go back and watch that, I showed the cameras compared to each other. The X1's got a little smaller protrusion. The camera on the eHume sticks out a little bit further. It's kind of a, a bulkier looking camera. Uh, I mean, I don't really care too much about that. I mean, I don't really look behind my rearview mirror and you don't really see it from the outside, at least not in my car, you don't. So that's kind of a wash. Uh, besides that, so I guess if I was given the X1 a 1 to 10 rating, I'd probably give it a, uh, probably an 8. I mean, I like the design of it. The Ehum A10 is a fine design, nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's the handles here. I'd say this was more of a uh, sporty look on the Ehum A10, whereas uh, the X1 seems like more of a, I don't know if I want to say a elegant look, but it is, it seems to fit more into my interior a little better anyway. I, I have a 8th uh, gen Honda Civic, but yeah, because I have a gray interior, so the, the X1 is a grayish silver so it fits more in with the interior anyway that's it guys i think i'm done um like i said if you have any questions leave your comments down below and i will reply to you and try to get you the answer or tell you what i know about it i'm actually going to give this thing away because i have no use for it i have the x1 i'm keeping the x1 um, if this thing had won me over, it may have been different, but uh, still loving my X1. I'm going to hang on to it, so I have no use for this. Like I said, I got it as a free, as a review, um, so I didn't pay anything for it, so it's not costing me anything, so I'm going to give it away. But here's the stipulation. If you subscribe, that's all you got to do is subscribe. I don't care if you leave a comment. It'd be nice if you left a comment, but you don't have to. Just subscribe. I'd be happy to hit 500. So if I get 500 subscribers by the end of this month, which is June, I will pick a random subscriber and I will contact them as the winner and I will mail this to you. So this is practically brand new. Like I said, I didn't install it fully. I just put it up here plugged it in just to get this review so everything will be pretty much brand new and it will come in the original box with all the packing and all that good stuff ready to go for you to use so I got it free so you will get it free all you have to do is subscribe if I get more than 500 even better but still I will pick a random subscriber and as the winner and ship it to them so please subscribe like the video and I will talk to you guys later